Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a great show today, Rubbing Minds on Television. My name is Latasha Angube. I'll be your host for today and the next couple of weeks. It's been a very exciting week all over the space, the social space, the political space. I mean, uh, Showere is still being detained. We're still waiting to hear from the DSS to figure out what we're going to be doing next to see if he's going to be released. Um, Samson Siasia's mom, too, has just been released from kidnappers. We're grateful that she was returned safely. Um, we have a really exciting show today, and I have some really, really interesting guests lined up to chat with you guys. I'm going to go straight to our first guest on the show today, Mr. Bankuli Osha. Good day, ma. Oh, Bankuli, you're so kind and so yes, warm. Welcome to the show. Thank you. For have you been on Robin Minds before? I've never. Well, unfortunately, this is my first time on Robin Minds. Unfortunately? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, unfortunately? Yeah, yeah, You're going to make been... it seem like we dragged you here kicking yeah, and well, screaming. Nobody invited me. You invited me. So oh. Yeah. Bankuli is a vocalist. And well, I mean, uh, my definition now is Please, getting Please, define, define yourself. I would well, like you to define yourself. I'm a music executive. Okay. I'm a music merchant. But you started off in A&R. Exactly. So, still, so let me tell the world what I know about Bankuli. Okay. The story so far, in, according to me. Bankuli Osha is uh, started off in A&R, management, um, talent, talent recruitment, um, you know, extensive, extensive behind the scenes work with some of Nigeria's biggest artists. You've worked with the Banj. You've worked with Don Jazzy, you've worked with Mohits as a group. Um, you're responsible for many, many cultural bridges being developed from Africa to the world. I know that you are responsible for introducing uh, Malik Berry to Kanye West. The band. Okay. Uh, to the as well to yeah, Kanye not, West. Yeah, you, made, you made all of these things happen. So tell me, why do people not quite know the man who's been responsible for all of these great things? Uh, well, it, well, for me, um, it's not, I'm not doing it because of self-glorification. Mm. I'm doing it because I believe it should be done. And um, for the culture, the culture needs to grow from, from point A to point B. So I just take it, as, um, I take it as a duty, the same way everybody wakes up in the morning and like the whole family must eat. Well, that same person, that same individual should have been thinking about only his tummy alone. So for me, I believe, you know, taking the culture from point A to point B is my responsibility. If any other person wants to do it with me, I'm so gladly open. And the more, the better, the merrier, the better. So a lot of people don't know this, but Beyonce's recently released album, The Gift, which was her gift to the world from Africa, from an African perspective, one of, the sound, one of the soundtrack albums for Lion King, the new Disney release movie, yeah. you were featured on that album. You, you, had, you were on three songs, if I'm not mistaken, three yeah. songs on that album. Yeah. They had also a lot of Nigerian, a lot of African acts. They had Tiwa Savage, Burner, Burner Boy, Shatawale, Wizkid, Techno, Mr. Easy, and so many others. And then there's you on three songs. How do I go from being me to being me with three songs on Beyonce's album? Well, it's a long story that I, I hope I can tell. Compound it for me. Some, 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 maybe some other day. But for now, I will just take it down and just summarize it to God. Because for me, I'm a very believer in God. And I believe nothing happens, you know, without... God um, ordained, I mean, God ordained in God's plan. Um, yes, I was in LA for, for so many different reasons, you know, of course, to emancipate the culture. And I was called upon and, and what can I do? <laughs> what I will always say to people, I don't want to say too much story about what actually happened in detail, but um, I believe we should all be extraordinarily prepared. You must be prepared in everything you do. You must be the best of the best in everything you do so that when you are called upon, um, you don't wither, you know, you stand firm and do what you need to do. Of course, my background, apart from being a music executive, apart from, you know, you know being a music merchant, I'm also a musician myself. And um, That's a little known fact. Exactly. How long have you been doing music? I've been doing music from age four. But you've never recorded anything I've recorded commercially. An, I've recorded a lot. Well, for, I've, 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 for I've, your personal consumption. No, no, I've not. But you're going to see more of that very soon. But 
behind the scene, I've been doing a lot of work. Now is the time to know got the money. You're joking. That was you. Yeah, that's me. Are you credited on these songs? Uh, well, you know the way the old Nigeria. How does it go? Uh, well, uh, there's no. It's getting better now. Yes. Because back in the days, you know, people are so scared to talk about. Yeah, this person did um, background vocals on my song. Some people they want make I cry. Some people they pray make I die. That Why? was you. Yeah, I was there. I was, my voice was <laughs> hidden somewhere. Interesting. There, you know? Interesting. And of course on What the Throne with Jay Z and Kanye. Okay. I was, there. I was on two tracks there. Um, Lift off featuring Beyonce and so many other. So artists. this isn't your first time working no, with no, Beyonce. No, 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 no. But I mean, for this project, for all intents and purposes, for this project, you worked with the Queen. What is it like working with Beyonce? Tell me one extraordinary thing that you saw, you interacted with Beyonce, and you thought, this is why she's the queen? Well, they are very, I'll put, I'm sorry to use that word, they are very, very creatively organized. They have a plan, they have a plot, and it must be executed. And I believe, for someone like me, I've interfaced with a lot of them like that, from, I mean, for years back, mm -hmm. and I've inserted that into the way I deal with people out here. There must be a plot. There must be a, a, a well-planned, orchestrated design for the project. And the execution must be extremely to the details. Mm. Meaning every song on the album was well scripted. There was a set, I mean, there's a sound design. They have the plot. It's not freestyling. It's not lastminute.com. Mm. And um, the way they work out there is, um, Five, six, seven heads are better than one. Yeah. Not the same way we run our stuff here when it comes to music, you know. Not just the artist and the producer, because every time you listen to most, most of the song here, you only hear produced by one person. No A and R in the room. No, cre no other creatives in the room. So what do you get? You get fabrication of just two people's brain. While for them, what they have is, you know, you have five, ten people. I remember one of those tracks during the Water Throne session. We had, in one other room, there was T-Pain, there was Don Jazzy, there was Diplo. Those are like three mega producers mm. in the room. And so, and Mike Dean, you understand what I'm saying? So when you have four supersonic super producers in the room, there's no how you won't get the final, there's no how the final product won't hit the ground running. So there's been a lot of buzz on social media about Whiskey making it into the album and Davido not making it into the album. And people, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, contests on one side, on the other. And some are saying that it, ultimately, this is the proof that one artist is better than the other, or one is greater than the other. What do you make of that? Number one, um, I'm gonna say for very total clarification. I don't know why on this side of the world. Well, it's good for the business, you know, when you try to pitch the two artists together. For me, I believe they are one of the, I mean, the two of them are the one of the, I mean, they are the best, they are the best of the best for each other. In regards to, you know, David has a style, Whiskey has a style. There's no reason why we should, you know, compete or we should try and pitch the two of them together. For me, as a fatherly figure to the two of them, I call them ambassadors. That's what I see them as. I don't see any rivalry between the two of them because Whiskey is successful in what he does. He has done pretty much a lot of collaborations. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking of, um, you know, um, Chris Brown. You know, she is with Beyonce. And the same thing with David O. David O is with um, uh, Chris Brown as well. And so many other times, his forthcoming album, I've listened to some, you know, some massive track and massive collaboration that I can't talk about now. In that, you know, and for me, I don't know how people see them from there. I mean, from afar, but for me, they are, they are both great, I mean, creative genius. Okay, I like, I like your perspective. But let me ask you something. In the words of PDD, did you ever think that you would be this rich? Did you ever think that you would have this, would you ever be this big? Did you ever imagine it in this way as it's happening right now? I want to say yes and no. Because my explanation can be a little bit, it will throw a lot of people off. Go for it. When I was very young, I had so many conversations that came around. You know the way parents, they know it's going to happen, but we don't know the time because God owns the time. And um, 
Like I always say, you know, before you can be great, there must be preparation. I mean, when I mean preparation, from when you were young, and uh, my story is, pe is pretty nice and not pretty nice as well. Because, you know, growing up, you know, you have to learn what music is. You have to, you know, learn all the musical I instruments. You must know what the detail is. So doing the business part of music is a little bit more, you know, more great for me because I can understand where the artist is coming from. I can understand where the producer is coming from. And I, I can also understand how the people that are listening to the music, how they feel, because that is most important when you're creating music. You must be able to, you know, imagine the end product from the beginning of the creation of the product. And with that, you become, you know, it appears to people that, ah, that guy is great, you know. So you are saying, is successful, so you know? what you're saying is that you've always somehow known that you were going to get there. Of course. It's just a matter of time. Of course, it's, it's just in the blind side. You so, know me from back in the days. Uh, so let me, let me, I don't need what to a lot of it. people don't know is I've met you. I remember the first time we met and it wasn't such a rosy it wasn't such a rosy uh, experience, but we settled our differences and we moved on. I have to because you know, you, know, you can't fight any women. Women are, women are they are our backbone. Absolutely, but um, you've not worked with a lot of women in your career in terms of artists. I disagree. Please share, because I don't know. I know you with the Banjes and the um, Kanyes, and I, and look at your name, the Banj Kanye, Wizkid. Well, uh, the no. first woman I interacted with in yeah. terms of actually plugging in into the Nigerian music system is Tiwa Savage. Interesting. This will be the first time I will ever say it. And I'm going to say it just for the sake of the question you asked. Okay. Because for me, I believe women need a lot of support when it comes to music business because they are always on the, on the, on the, on the downside in terms of support. And the way, you know, the way music itself, any musician in Nigeria, our parents, or even from people back in the days, they believe they are just noise makers. Now, as a man, it's okay to be a musician, right? Mm -hmm. But for a woman, they believe you are supposed to be a wife, you're supposed, supposed to be a career person. So it's always extremely very difficult for so them. Tiwa for Tiwa, else? you know, mm -hmm. um, even for Tiwa, you'll be so shocked. I remember, you know, Cecil Amon approached me with Don Jazzy that oh, there's this lady that is very... Talented and which music does she have? She has only the national anthem of Nigeria. Mm. And when they brought it to me, like, that's the only music she has. I said, national anthem? Okay, so how do we do this? I listened to the, to the national anthem she sang. It was so beautiful. I'm sure if you search on YouTube, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Very innocent, no makeup, beautiful young lady. And I'm like, this is a hit right there. But they didn't see it. So I took that and I went around the old TV, radio station. We were able to put it and even encourage, I'm sorry, to, can I mention other stations? Please, go ahead. NTA was able to swap what they have back in the days. You know, they used to have that green, white, green, mm -hmm. bang, 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 bang. They switch it to what the video of Tiwa singing national anthem. And so we have, we, so you've worked with Tiwa. I do know that you've worked with some other artists that you, there are certain artists I've met through There's a lot of them I've worked with, yes. um, I mean, behind the scene, including even at some point, Victoria Kimani. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and um, which other ones? There's one now that I'm pushing. Her name Dolapo. is Dolapo. Uh, yes, I'm aware. I've seen her on your social media pages. And that's another thing. We'll come back to Dolapo in a minute. But there's a project I see you doing on social media called Connect the Dots, which I've seen, so I've seen some already established faces. I've seen people like Amber Riley. I've seen a couple of young talents. Speed Darlington. Speed, I've seen Speed Darlington on there. Recently, I, had, I saw Shei Tinubu. What is the idea behind connecting the dots? Is it connect the dots or connecting the dots? Connecting the dots. Yes, the by Bankuli. The idea of connecting the dots is, I believe we're all created in God's image, but we all work in isolation. And I believe it is the time now to try and bring everybody together. There's a lot we have done for the lifestyle setup of Nigerian, you know, entertainment business. You've, no, it's not about being thank you that you cannot talk about, that I know about. I believe it's an opportunity, it's a platform for me to bring you, to make you talk about that unique thing that can, that can, that can actually you know, become a turning point for whoever that is listening to it. And I believe my platform, a lot of people know me around the world and they follow me and they try to know what's going on in Africa. So it's an opportunity for me to showcase those that I come across that I know are doing one thing or the other that is very extraordinary 
You understand? It's an opportunity to showcase what they have and show it to the world. So that is connecting the dot with either A, B, C, or D. Mm. Um, so again, back to your beginnings, A and R. What is A and R? A lot of people don't know what that means. What does A and R mean? Well, it has a very, very funny um, French um, definition, artist repertoire. Yeah. But to break it more down, you know, when you're creating music, there's always somebody that should be in the room. That person is also like, an, like a driver. It's technically like a producer as well that should be able to, you know, communicate that language between a musician and a producer. And of course, listening to the music itself, you should be able to, I mean, to make suggestions about how that music can be taken from one point to another. You cannot leave everything in the hands of producers. And speaking of music, the band Don Jazzy, do you think they will ever make good music? Do you think they will ever make good music again? I know they are friends now, but... I don't know, in terms of doing business or making music, that is left for the two of them to answer. Would you be willing to sit them both in a room to make sure that good music comes out of that room? You cannot force, you cannot force two people into a room to create music. Mm. You will never get anything. So when it comes naturally, it, is, it makes more sense for them to come together, choose a time, a place for themselves to come into the room. It's like saying Jay-Z and Harry mm. should just go into the room and create music. You were not there when they were doing what they threw now. You don't know what inspired that. No, I wasn't. <laughs> so I'm sure they, they should be able to figure it out. I see you wearing this brand, Osha. I've been talking about it. Final note, tell me about Osha brand. Well, for Osha brand, I believe a lot of people have overused hoodies. Mm. They always make hoodies, always black, black, black. Black has been overused. And for me, I believe in bright colors. At a, at a point in time in my life, I was able to make some decisions about changing the way I live. Because at the end of the day, if you are saying you're a child of God, you know, people look at you and they respect you, they, they hail you, Bankuli, Osha, you must be able to show to the world how great God is through your character. That's what actually started with the colors and stuff. For the name, I believe, you know, Osha means two things for me. It means Osha, you know, the way because Osha means it's cold. And they exaggerate it, Osha Prapa, which uh -huh. you're familiar with. And the other word for Osha is Osha, which literally means a local small god. And I believe we're all created in God's image and likeness. And I'm a small god. It's yeah, evident. And, and the same thing with you and the same thing with the cameraman. So, you know, it's an opportunity for me. It's self-exaltation. Not, you know, not overdoing it beyond the, I mean, of yeah, course. You, can't, yeah, you can't do all those blasphemy. But for mm -hmm. me, I believe it's, this is a name that people take for something bad. And I believe it's not something bad, it's something great. So in, in, in our individuality, we're all great. Mm. Um, a lot of Nigerian artists, a lot of Nigerian artists are always in a hurry to sign recording deals and all of that. Where are the dividends? What are, what's, we're not seeing enough of the growth I think, from all of these deals. Very, very quickly. Okay. Tell us. Quickly, this is what I would say about um, record labels and record deals, deals and yes. artists and whatever. I've been saying it in some other platforms. For me, I believe the problem that is going on in Nigeria is a lot of people want to do business in music. They want to set up record labels. Yes, they have money. They have the backing. They have solid whatever, solid structure. But unfortunately, there's something missing. They don't have a team. Mm. And when you don't have the right team, there's no matter money you pump into it, it's going to collapse. Record label is not a joke. For you to have Sony's, Warner's, and you know, other labels still standing, it's not just because they have money. So an it's artist... It's a structure. Now, if the record, most of the record labels we have around in Nigeria, yeah, it's good they're coming out, but they need information about how to run the business and make money from it. But, but we're running out of time, but an artist needs... One, two, three, four people. Tell me, who are those people at an every point in time? An artist needs a very good manager. Mm -hmm. He needs a very good lawyer. Mm -hmm. And of course, you need one creative person around you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bankuli. Um, I hope you come back to the show. I'm wishing you many more wins Thank you. on the international front, on all your endeavors, everything you're doing. Thank I you. do hope that we hear so much more from you. And uh, let's see what else you well, have. Well, I'm working on a documentary that I'm trying to you know, unify not just Nigerians, but all Nigerians or Africans Africa. around the world. Wonderful. It's called Chronicles of uh, Afrobeat. 
Looking forward to it. Yeah. We're going on a break right now and we'll be right back still on Rubbing Minds with some new guests. Don't go anywhere.